Welcome, everyone. Kevin Carpenter here with Jason Turner. We've been here and done this once or twice, but I love talking with Jason. You know, Constex for everything. You've got a workshop coming up at CPP on C and a talk, of course. So mm -hmm. welcome. Good to see you again. But thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's always fun to do these kinds of things. So workshop at CPP on C. Understanding object lifetime for efficient and safer C++. I, so I saw your object life. I, I want to say I saw an object lifetime talk from you at the Maiden Bower in 2018. And, and I just have to relate, like that time I was blown away because it was one of the first talks I've seen where, you know, you're going from one side of the stage to the other, you know, asking questions, getting everyone involved where it's like, okay, this side, yay, this side, which to me is just, I think it's important to be able to get that kind of interaction with the people you're talking to and that you're working with. And that is, well, it is what, how I like to do things for conference talks. And, and yeah, I mean, I try to be as animated as engaging as possible. I think that's probably before I was actually getting up and down off the stage and, and doing things like handing out t-shirts in the audience and stuff. <laughs> um, that's, I guess, a downside to C++ on C is the, the main stage anyhow is too tall for me to just hop off of it. But that's beside the point. If you want to come to my workshop, do expect that we're going to have at least that level of interaction. There's not going to be 200 people in the room. We'll be able to actually, you know, talk, you know, more as a, a group conversation is what I aim for usually for my workshops. So I'm looking at the, you know, the topics that you're covering and it's like understanding RAII and what does the standard say? And, you know, stood move mm -hmm. versus stood forward. And so me, I consider myself more of an intermediate level. You know, there's some things that I do that are advanced, but to me, these are things that I would want a deeper understanding on even as a beginner. And so yeah, yeah. can you t speak, speak a bit on that if you don't mind? Well, I, I do often say that this class is good for beginners also, but um, sometimes in a few places, we really get bogged down with like, our value references and and why, for example, if you have a function that accepts an R value reference, you need to call move again to actually get a move operation inside that function. Just the fact that it's an R value reference that was passed into you doesn't mean that you're going to get an implicit move on the next operation you perform with this thing. Um, so I try to get you understanding most of that without getting too bogged down in what the standard actually says, but we do get a little bogged down in there. So basically, if you've never seen an R value reference before, then um, then it's going to be a little bit more of a learning curve for you, uh, which is probably what I was thinking when I didn't check the box for beginner on this class. But uh, if you've if you've seen an R value reference, if you have any idea what those two ampersands are together, if you've ever seen a move, then you know, then I think you can have a pretty good conversation with the class here. So, do you ever find when you're working with the class, you know, that you know, because I was talking with Amir about a workshop he's doing, and it's like you get somebody that's advanced, you get someone that's in the begin, you know, in their beginning stages, where. The class, you know, because when I think of the way you interact with the audience of a talk, I imagine with a class, it's, you know, even that much more intimate. Yeah. Where you get the advance and that discussion can actually, you know, feed down to everybody else in the group or feed up, you know, somebody from a beginning level will ask a question that, you know, in a way might be obvious to someone that's in the advance, but then it also brings up that fact of, well, am I actually doing that kind of a thing? Yeah, uh, I've, I've. Definitely seen this work every way. I mean, and, and, you know, honestly, when you've done as many classes as I have, sometimes you have the person in the class that for whatever reason is monopolizing the entire conversation or, you know, is like asking questions that are like, well, yes, but in the C++26 proposed standard, we'll get this rule change. And I'm like, hold on. That's not necessarily, you know, appropriate conversation for the class. And sometimes you have to dial things back with the level of interaction that I invite and, and I want in the class. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I've seen, I've seen things where I had half of the class had like basically never programmed in C++ before. And the other half of the class use C++ every day uh, when I'm doing like a corporate training and the people that I'm with 
therefore like had chosen to put all these people in one class together and then they self-segregated. So I had like half of a beginner's class on the left-hand side of the room, stage left, or my left, and um, and and like advanced people almost on the entire other half of the classroom and still trying to keep this level of interaction. And like you said, feeding up and feeding down. So sometimes uh, people ask a question. But, you know, I'm going to say this. Uh, first of all, I don't really like the words beginner and advanced when I talk about training in C++ because I feel like C++ is such a gigantic topic that um, uh, is in so many different industries that you can be like an expert on the topics that you need to know for your industry. And they might be something that I've only barely scratched the surface of. Right. So I don't like I don't like beginner, intermediate and advanced when I talk C++. And the other thing is. Often someone who thinks that they're a beginner, when they ask a question, it's often the case that the person who's been programming in C++ 15 years that's sitting beside them doesn't know the answer to that question either. That's like way more often than you would expect. That does not surprise me at all because, you know, that's the part where, you know, I think in our industry, there's so many people that you're talking about imposter syndrome, but it's like when I talk about what I do, you know, because I work with credit cards and credit card processing. And, you know, on one hand, like I said, I describe myself as an intermediate. I think I picked that by bias because, like, I'm in the middle, you know, and I know, you know, and I think it's just easiest. But then there's things where I'll talk about one. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we're processing four billion dollars a month. And, you know, we have, you know, a thousand transactions a second. People are like, well, wait, that the, the threading you're doing, the memory. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's just, you know, but that's, oh, that's my normal. domain every yeah. day, you right. know. Um, so, so I appreciate that. I, I totally get what you're saying there about, and the part I was asking about that is more, you know, like I said, all the time that I've got to see you talk and work with Jason, it's like, um, I've seen how well I feel you pull the group together and, and, and are able to work both sides, which is where I'm trying to point out like object lifetime, you know, that was, a when you first gave that talk, that helped me a lot, which is where I want to make sure people know if if you're in this area, you want to come to this class. The things that you're going to take away from it, I think, are are far greater, and they they help me actualize a level of learning that I didn't have prior to it. So let's like take a second then for uh, people who have made it this far into the interview and say, let's point out like um, what is an object in C plus plus, like what. What is an object? It's it's actually easier to say what is not an object in C++. Yeah. Like people who come from an object-oriented background might think, oh, well, an instance of a class is an object. Well, that's true, but that's not the only thing that's an object. In C++, the only things that aren't objects are basically references mm -hmm. and uh, functions. Right. And then we have to distinguish, no, I don't mean lambdas because... Closure yep. objects are objects, right? I mean, like global, like functions. Um, but a function pointer, that's an object, right? Yep. So object lifetime affects literally every aspect of our programming. And having an idea what that means to the compiler and what the compiler can do efficiently when we, you know, are taking advantage of the rules that the, that the compiler follows for object lifetime um, it's just really fundamental to writing like simple, good, clean, safe, well-performing C++ code. And kind of reluctant to say this, but I've seen like some modern Rust, and I'm just saying, if you write your C++ in a nice, clean way that understands object lifetime, it's way simpler than writing Rust. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, you want to take Jason's <laughs> class and workshop so you can figure out how to beat Rust. I didn't say that. It wasn't no, important. not that's definitely not the words I would use. <laughs> no, but you're also giving a talk understanding the context for two step from compile time to runtime, which yes, my favorite title you've given before was context for all things. So all the things, yeah, all the things. Sorry, context for all the things. I keep I keep forgetting. I think it was actually Matt Godbolt who suggested that title originally. Uh, and then Ben ran with it, something like that. I forget what the deal was. Um, but this is this is this is assuming that you want to use constexpr, 
Mm-hmm. But you find yourself tripped up on like, sure, now we've got context per vector and we've got context per string and C++ 20, that's great. What do you mean I can't actually create a context per vector? Okay, well, what do we do with that? Sure, you can use vector at compile time, but that vector is not allowed to escape compile time context. So how do we deal with that in a way that makes sense? And so it's going to be breaking down um, some stuff. Uh, if you watch every single episode of C++ Weekly I've ever given, then um, you might know all the things in this talk, but I'm going to simplify it and break it down even more for what's possible. C++ 23 will come into play as well for how we can really make this, like how we can simplify our uses of context per code and, and move more work to compile time and then have efficient access to it at runtime. So that is one that, you know, Normally when I volunteer, I don't end up getting to watch too many talks live, but either way, it is one that I will watch because I do watch C++ Weekly as often as I can. If you're not already watching Jason for for his channel, you need to subscribe to that. But more importantly, come see Jason live, CPP on C, first week of July, join the workshop, understand object lifetime in a whole new fashion. And Jason, like I think it's been a year that I missed you, but I look forward to seeing you there. So been a year. Yeah, well, I'll definitely see you there. And this is coming up. Well, my my flight app just told me I have 46 days until I check in for this flight. So <laughs> yeah. faster than we expect, and it'll be here before you know it, right? <laughs> it will be here before you know it. Jason, I appreciate your time today. I'll see you in Folkestone. Great. Right, thanks. See you there.